Most fighting games are a bit weird when you think about it, like who decided that fighting on a space elevator was a good idea, and what kind of fighting tournament let a bear compete? Something tells me they didn't have much of a choice. Regardless, though regular fighting games may be on the strange side, they're nothing compared to these seven beat-em-ups which broke our brains harder than Baraka's new fatality in Mortal Kombat 11. Not pictured. If you've ever seen the musical Les Miserables, you will have thought to yourself one of two things. Either, wow, this is an incredible portrayal of the struggles people went through in revolutionary France, or, wow, this would make an incredible one-on-one -on -one fighting game. If you're in the latter camp, then good news! Such a game exists in the form of independently produced fighting game Arm Joe, which pits characters from Les Mis against each other in bare-knuckle brawling action. All your favourites are here! Jean Valjean, Eponine, Javert, Cosette's stuffed animal who is apparently called Pon Pon, and a robot version of Jean. Don't remember him. Maybe he's from the original Victor Hugo novel. Arm Joe is actually a solid fighting game with some interesting mechanics and lots of clever references to the source material. There's Marius' Ultra Combo, for example, which references his slaughtered revolutionary pals, as described in the song Empty Chairs at Empty Tables, one of the most maudlin numbers in the musical, which is saying something. <laughs> Just be prepared if you haven't already seen Les Miserables to be disappointed if you ever do go, expecting a scene where Marius hits a crushing 15-hit super combo on Enjolras. Because there isn't one. Come on, Victor Hugo, you're letting the side down. Time Killers is a 1992 arcade fighter in which combatants from various points throughout history must do battle with one another and then death itself for a chance at immortality. It's basically histotainment TV show Deadliest Warrior, only with slightly fewer scenes of someone machine gunning a pig carcass. Oh, yeah. well done. The characters include cavemen, vikings, knights and samurai, as well as futuristic mutants and aliens, and some bloke with a chainsaw, shout out to the 21st century. <laughs> what makes Time Killers really weird though is the fact that you can dismember your opponents and the fight will keep going. Do enough damage to an enemy arm and it'll come off, rendering it useless in combat, which is a pretty big disadvantage if that was the hand holding their weapon. You can cut off the other arm as well, leaving your opponent with no option but to try and kick you to death, like the Black Knight from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. You've got to admire their guts. I mean, it's hard not to, they're all over the floor. Move on, smashing through! Okay, everyone here? Then let's get to work. Okay. Now, I've never had a job as a heavy machinery operator on a construction site, but I'm pretty sure that at least one of the rules regarding their operation says you're not allowed to use them to batter other construction workers. Yet that's exactly the premise of BCV Battle Construction Vehicles, an early 2000s fighting game for the PS2 which imagines building sites as hotbeds of vehicular combat and weirdly British smack talk. You're tough, Gramps! Listen to me! You must succeed your father! I beg you, young master! Shut it, Gramps! While the build-ups were dramatic, fights in practice mostly involved you gently bonking your bulldozer against cranes and forklift trucks until they explode. That's not to say there weren't some truly baffling special attacks, because there were. Crane sword blade! Case! Test! Forearm! Thrust! There really, really were. Dancing Needle! Dance! Farewell. I see now why you're not allowed to go on building sites. Giant wasps. Dong Dong Never Die is a frankly incredible fighting game released for free online in 2009 by a group of Chinese fighting game fans. Made in the do-it-yourself program 2D Fighter Maker, Dong Dong Never Die uses digitized versions of the game's creators to create a fighting game that is a cross between Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, and the line to get into an anime convention. Fighters include a guy in a monkey mask with a spray can, 
these two who are anyone's guess. And Mario. Starting to see why this didn't get a commercial release. Despite its spectacular weirdness, DDND is a lovingly crafted homage to a genre its creators obviously adore, and the game's sense of style can't be denied. <laughs> Which is more than can be said for the fighters themselves. Honestly, having a hard time deciding which of these hats is worse. <laughs> if you're sick of fighting games having identifiable characters that you like, do I have just the game for you? That's a rhetorical question. The answer is yes. I do. I do have that. Balls, released in 1994 for the Sega Mega Drive and Super Nintendo, featured various collections of spheres battering the hell out of each other for the chance to face and defeat final boss The Jester, known for his famous quote, Balls, 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 balls. Or was that Shakespeare? Ah, no, The Jester. Other characters included a farting monkey, a ballerina, and a sumo wrestler, but to be honest, you could tell me these fighters are literally anything you like because everyone just looks like a loosely connected cloud of various coloured balls. And every fight looks a bit like a school science video about the structure of DNA. It also included maybe the worst theme song in the history of video games. Oi. Oi. Honestly, balls to this. Shouniki Bakuretsu Rantohen is a 1995 Japan-only fighting game for the Super Nintendo in which a selection of utterly bonkers characters knock each other silly in various weird locations. Characters include Adon, a flying bodybuilder, Cebu, who is somehow half-ship, half-pagoda and half-Elvis Presley, and Mami-19, who is a girl who is also a battleship, upon which three tiny naked men are having a party. I'm doing my best to try and explain Shoaniki here using stupid human words, but honestly, it's easier to just show you. See what I'm talking about? Because I'm not entirely sure I do. Think of all your favourite moments in Star Wars. Now, how many of them are one-on-one -on -one fist fights? If you answered obviously zero, then congratulations, you're better at Star Wars than the developers of Star Wars Masters of Terras Cassi, a one-on-one -on -one fighting game released for the original PlayStation. Knockout. You win. The Terras Cassi of the title is a martial art made up for this game. Terras Cassi, as far as I can tell, just involves wailing on your opponent with whatever you have lying around, including lightsabers, blasters, and thermal detonators. Jeez. You win. Nice one, Leia. According to the plot of the game, Masters of Terras Cassi takes place between A New Hope and Empire, and is genuinely about the Emperor being so mad about the destruction of the Death Star that he sends someone good at space karate to go and beat up Luke Skywalker and his mates. <laughs> You win. You are a pitiful fighter. No official word on whether this is still Star Wars canon after the expanded universe reshuffle, but I'm going to go ahead and say yes, all this definitely happened. Ring out. You win. You're braver than I thought. Especially that. Anyway, there you have it, some of the very strangest fighting games we've ever come across. Any other favourite examples we missed? Let us know in the comments below and like and subscribe for more videos like this from Outside Xbox. Thanks for watching.